yo what's really good people welcome back to the channel today we're going to be discussing some things particularly around etfs easy to forget investments i know i've done a lot of videos recently on technology on stocks on high growth and in today's video we're still going to talk about technology stocks high growth but i'm going to put a bit of an etf spin on it and i'm going to explain why i think arc and their ETFs are probably some of the best investments out there. Now, spoiler alert, you cannot invest in any ARK ETF products within the UK, but I'm going to show you two ways that you can towards the end of the video. So stick around for how you can actually invest in ARK products by the end of the video. But yeah, today we're gonna to be talking about ARK investments. I'm gonna show you some of their products. I'm gonna show you some of their performance. I'm gonna talk about some of their holdings. I'm gonna talk about their management, their philosophy, and I'm gonna explain why I feel through all of that, that they're actually one of the best investment management firms out there. So if you wanna know all of that plus more, like, comment, hit that subscribe button, bottom right hand corner. And if you wanna join the board, hit that join button as well, and you will be able to join the Infant Investors Board where we can give you stock picks. There'll be a private community, there's exclusive spreadsheets, checklists on what to look for for dividend stocks, for growth stocks, might even throw an ETF checklist out there now that we're talking about it so yeah definitely join the channel support the channel 3.99 or 6.99 depending on what you want to get out of it and we will talk more on that side listen right now i'm on the arc invest website which is basically their website discussing you know all of the products and services that they basically have in terms of their ets but for those of you that are new out there i am going to do just a little bit of a snapshot on what etfs are just explaining the whole etf concepts and principles the things to look out for before i delve deeper into the arc situation and why i think they're basically great so etf stands for easy to forget we've done a video about probably about I'd say maybe a year and a half ago now, but maybe maybe less than that, where I talked about ETFs and I said they're called easy to forget investments. And, you know, the technical term is exchange traded funds. I like to call them easy to forget investments because the whole purpose of them is that you invest and you forget. You don't have to actively manage. You don't have to deal with the research that we do for all of the individual stocks that we buy. You put your money in there, you sit tight, you grab a Snickers, you hold tight and you just watch your money grow. Grow. that's the whole purpose and that's the reason why I call them easy to forget investments because you're meant to just forget about them you're meant to put your money in there and just completely forget about them but the technical term is an exchange traded fund and all that simply means a fund is a basket of stocks and exchange traded means that basket of stocks is wrapped up as a security slapped a ticker symbol on it and you can go and basically buy that on certain investment brokers and platforms depending on which ones they obviously hold i think etfs are great for passive investors i'm an active investor so what that basically means is i'm one of those weird people that likes to research stocks i like to research companies and businesses i like to look at their finances i like to look at their news their customer numbers you know their new products and services their new advancements in technology i like to look at their competitors and analyze it and i like to then decide you know what these are the stocks that i want to put my money behind you know why because i'm ocd and i like to decide what i do with my money however there's some of you out there that might you know be more interested in art or ballet or you might be more interested in i don't know hiking or something or you might be a photographer and you ain't got time for all of that but you know that investing is a very 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 important thing and you know putting your money into stocks is a very important thing however you ain't got the time to basically be looking at all of the intricacies and ins and outs of stocks then what you need is things like etfs which are good easy to forget investments that you can do let someone else do all of the leg work there is a little fee which we're going to discuss about later on and obviously you can then grow your money money that way as well but yeah effectively it's a basket of stocks that is bought and sold on the stock market and it can basically track anything you can have some that track a specific industry a specific sector a specific region stocks of a certain market cap so you've got ones that track only small cap companies you know you've got ones that track commodities ones that track bonds they pretty much can track anything out there um and you know then obviously depending on what you want to be exposed to is what obviously you're going to basically get out of it 
they're created by financial institutions. Arc is obviously one of those, but you know, there's loads like Vanguard, like, you know, PIMCO, iShares, BlackRock. So financial institutions typically create them. And once they're registered and they're approved then they get traded on the stock market, just like any other stock, they're pretty good for diversification. If you feel that diversification is important to you, diversification is something that Warren Buffett has spoken about where he's against diversification. And he says, you know, if you, if you, you know, if you don't pick your own stocks, he thinks diversification is basically for fools um, because you're basically betting against your own negligence but if you do want to diversify then obviously an ETF might be a good way to go and what he would recommend is say getting something like an ETF tracking the S&P 500 um, whereas if you don't want to diversify and you want to just pick you know five or six or seven holdings then obviously you know you're probably more likely going to be an active investor but it is good for diversification it's good for exposure to different sectors some also pay dividends they pay it in typically two different ways you've got accumulating ones and then you've got distributing ones so accumulating basically means the dividend that it makes it actually gets reinvested back into the fund you don't see it but obviously it is accumulated within the fund and effectively growing and then you've got distributed which actually means it gets paid out to you so you see the little 21p 35 pounds 121 pounds drop into your account and then you can obviously reinvest that money back into the fund or into some other stock or take it out and you know buy a tinder date of apiano or something or whatever you guys like to do with your money do you know what i mean and you've got ETFs that track indexes. So the NASDAQ, you know, the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, the FTSE 100, the CAC 40, whatever index is out there, you've got ETFs whose job is to track those indexes and to try and replicate the performance as closely as possible. So you've got some that actually do, you know, sampled replication and you've got some that do full replication. Basically sampled is like a statistical uh, method to try and actually kind of beat the performance performance um, by using some form of um, mathematical algorithms whereas the full replication is basically whatever the weighting is in that index they will basically replicate it if Tesla's in an index and it's got 10% weighting then they would basically replicate it into that so that's basically the way um, that they work now if we focus a bit more on ARK Invest ETFs, what you can see is they've got some of their own index ETFs, but the predominant thing we're gonna be focusing on here is their active ETFs. And the key thing to note about active ETFs and why they're different to index ETFs is that they have managers. They have managers and then those managers are typically actively trying to increase the performance of those ETFs. Now, all types of ETFs have expense ratios. Expense ratios is effectively the cost to manage the ETF, the cost to market the ETF, the cost to maintain the ETF. It's expressed as a percentage and it's taken out of the value of the fund. So you don't actually see a charge within your free trade account, but the fund value that you basically get from the performance is going to absorb the charge within that. So you don't see it, but it actually is there. Think of it like, you know, a spread when you're buying a stock. There's typically a spread or an FX charge. That might be a better example, an FX charge. So, you know, you don't see a percentage that you actually have to pay for directly, but during the conversion, uh, a spot rate, a percentage is basically taken. And obviously, you know, that means that you can then buy the US stock, but you know, you might actually get a bit less than what the actual value was because of the conversion charge and so forth. That's effectively the same thing of an expense ratio. So it's basically done on an annual basis. So it might say the expense ratio is 0.75%. So over the 365 days, 0.75% is gonna be taken out of the value of the fund um, for those that have obviously spent time managing it and trying to increase the performance um, and that's obviously going to be absorbed within your performance as well now one of the key things we're going to look at is past performance obviously as the saying goes past performance is not always an indicator of future performance but it's one of the best things to look at when you are comparatively looking at different ETFs particularly ones that are in the same sector I wouldn't compare ETFs across different sectors in terms of trying to ascertain which ones to buy but if you are say looking at a vanguard s p 500 versus an iShares s p 500 then looking at the past performance i think is a very very fair thing and a very wise thing a very prudent thing to basically be doing 
you want to look at the management team. Now, most index ETFs, you ain't got to worry about things like management teams. With a lot of ETFs, you don't have to worry about management teams, but some of them you will get within the key information document who's managing it. Um, some of that actually, you know, is probably not the biggest thing to look at, but I think in the case of ARC, they're a, a fantastic management team, which is obviously what we're going to come and talk about a little bit later on, um, and then obviously um, find out some more information about that. But let's get straight into ARC. That is the ETF overview, which I think, you know, hopefully should give you guys, if you're brand new to the world of ETFs, a good understanding of what ETFs are and what they're there to do. But let's talk a little bit about ARK. So ARK is basically an investment management firm. It's ran by a woman called Kathy Woods. And she is famous for basically saying that she believes Tesla is going to be $7,000 as a share price, which I completely disagreed with. Now, I think... You know, we live in a very um, sensitive time right now where you disagree with something and it, it means, you know, that you don't like them or something along those lines. And I've had conversations with people in the DMs when, when they said, oh, do you believe her? And I said, no, I don't believe she's going to do that. It's like, oh, you know, what, you don't think she's good then? No, I think she's fantastic at what she does. However, I disagree that I think Tesla is going to get to a $7,000 price share um share price one of the reasons why i disagreed is because i felt that tesla would do a stock split way before it gets there similar to obviously you know what apple has basically done because apple share price now would probably be like 10 grand or something along those lines and you know lo and behold tesla did a stock split so i'm talking these conversations were like six seven eight months ago so i don't ever think that te that tesla would ever get to a seven thousand dollar um in terms of share price one because obviously the stock split but i just felt the valuation is a little bit too rich and i think i can't remember what the time frame was off the top of my head but i just felt it was too rich however in any case her rationale for why she thinks tesla will grow in the future is definitely very very sound and obviously you know you guys know what performance tesla did um over the last year so yeah she's a very sound investor and um, she's been in the game for about 40 years managed over 5 billion in assets and the thing i like about her particularly is that she's very much focused on disruptive technologies of the future which is for me you know what what I actually interest what I'm interested in is the things that excite me when I'm looking at companies and so I think our you know our preferences there is very much aligned as well now one thing I really like which we're going to discuss in this video is that she's got a really great way of categorizing her funds now typically in most funds are categorized if especially if you're talking sector wise it's like a finance or technology or energy and honestly we live in a very heterogeneous society where nothing is really one thing like nothing is purest and one thing in isolation think about an etf that was to track humans as an example like you might have a fund the way that the market is basically you know talking about funds in this current moment is like you would have an etf that basically tracks black people an etf that tracks white people an etf that tracks young people an etf that tracks old people an etf that tracks americans an etf that tracks australians an etf that tracks you know just basically based off characteristics whereas the way that Kathy likes to look at her funds is that she actually tries to look at things from an enablement standpoint what is the company doing from an enablement standpoint and how many different verticals do they have and what are the different different dif different verticals trying to enable so if I use the human example rather than just saying do you have a black person ETF or a white person ETF is actually saying do you have a future leaders ETF and you can have future black leaders and future white leaders is actually saying do you have an ETF that focuses on um, supporting old people and you know anyone can basically support old people it's like having an ETF based off behavioral focuses rather than just pure characteristics and I think she's actually changing the way that the industry is even starting to think about ETFs and you're going to see that when we talk a bit more about the funds um, during in the course of this video as well so i really like the fact that she 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 basically you know does it in that way now i think what she looks at is how tech can basically enable society so what we're going to do now let's go into some of the funds and you know i'm gonna i'm gonna talk a bit more about how i kind of think she approaches it and, and what i kind of basically like about it as well so first of all she's got five funds that you can basically see here Arc Innovation, Arc Autonomous, Autonomous Technology and Robotics. 
ARC Next Generation Internet ETF, ARC Genomics Revolution and ARC FinTech Innovation as well. Um, and so let's talk a little bit about these funds. So with the ARC Innovation ETF, this is all about changing the way the world works. Now, whether it's through next generation internet services, genome advancements, whether it's through FinTech, the whole purpose of this fund is about changing the way the, the world works in the future. And that could be, again, across sectors. So this is the reason why it's not just about healthcare and it's not just about finance and it's not just about energy. It's about businesses who enable the changing the, of the way that the future basically works, which is the reason why um, I really like that. You can see here what the net asset value here, the net asset value is very simply characterizes the asset minus liabilities on a share price basis. And so that basically is the share price. So on a unit basis, basically, with me, makes that basically the share price so this is what the share price would be trading at um, if obviously you were to buy it on the stock market so you can see the performance here and here you can obviously see some of the historic performance so in the last three months this has gone up 61.42 percent since inception this is the annualized performance so you can see here it's about a 26 percent annual performance um the average investor performance i think is around what four to eight percent it's probably changed a lot recently if you think about the last you know few years um and what's basically been happening there happening there but i think people can make a lot more um in terms of annual returns if they obviously you know Know, change the way that they kind of approach investing and so you know 26 percent for someone that actually doesn't want to do anything who just wants to put their money into a market and see it grow you know you're definitely not getting that in a cash ISA, which is really good and then what you can see here is the top 10 holdings so this is the top 10 holdings um of you know this specific fund so you can see tesla you can see square roku um slack zillow lending tree etc etc now you know i can talk on this stuff for ages i'm not going to go through all of the different companies and what they do the link will be in the description and i definitely highly recommend that you guys you know definitely do you know your own checks and balances on you know what that basically is now Going into the second one, you can see that the net asset value of this, this one is the autonomous technology and robotics. So this is basically all about automations, whether it's transport or whether it's manufacturing, it's all about automated services, automated products, and how automation can be an enablement for the future. Now, you can see here that, you know, she talks about 3D printing, energy storage, whatever it might be. You can see the performance, sorry, the net asset value here, $62 is what it's trading at. You can see a 17% return compounded on an annual basis. Um, and then you can see some of the holders now here you can see Tesla's there again so you're probably thinking she's actually invested in Tesla in two separate individual funds and this is what you know what I kind of want to talk about from I think her mindset and the way she kind of approaches it so what she basically does is that she has analysts for the car business of Tesla. She has analysts for the green energy business of Tesla. She has analysts for the battery storage business of Tesla. And as I mentioned before, they're all different enablements for society as a whole. So the car business is a very different business to the green energy business, which is a very different business to the, to the battery storage business, right? However, there is obviously commonalities across all of those businesses. There's definitely commonalities and traits, but she sees them as different business verticals. And so based off that, what she's basically doing is saying that this fund is focused on as an example i'm just going to make up one energy green energy right so she wants to invest in tesla for that fact and she's going to change the weighting accordingly now she might do another fund that's based on autonomy auto automation and we know that tesla's obviously got self-driving vehicles so she's going to invest in tesla again in that but she might change the weighting accordingly and obviously she'll have comp other stocks that obviously um you know support and do the exact same thing so that's the way she's kind of approaching it imagine if you know you looked at a business and you could actually invest in not just the business as a whole but invest in a specific vertical of that business so as an example let's take apple right one of the reasons that i invest in apple is not because of the iphones even though that's their main business because i don't see their iphone business growing that much but i do see their services business growing i see their wearables business growing and because i see their services and their wearables business growing that's one of the key drivers drivers why i personally invest in apple now imagine a world where rather than actually invest in Apple as a whole, you can invest just in Apple wearables or you could invest just in Apple devices or you can invest just in Apple streaming or whatever it might be. 
that's effectively I think her med her mental model is when she's actually basically looking at these stocks she's basically saying I'm creating a fund based of this vertical of the business now because this business has an exposure and maybe say 24% of Apple's revenue might be wearables I'm just making that figure up I don't know what it is it could be that as an example I'm going to weight my bit my holdings of a certain amount to Apple in this fund because of that purpose but because Apple also does hardware and I've got another fund of hardware I'm going to also invest in Apple within this fund I hope that makes sense but that's the way that I've basically tried to enter her mind slightly and actually see the way she's approaching it and you know what I like it although it's not going to be 100% accurate in the sense that you know businesses obviously evolve their business verticals in unit and you can't just invest in Apple wearables as an example um, I like the way that she's basically centering it around enablements like I said centering it around what things need to be done for the world in the future rather than just what sector because you know look let's look at PayPal or Square as an example they're finance but they're also technology but they're also payments but they're also you know social um, if you think about Venmo and Cash App so you know they could basically be in a number of sectors and I think the way she's basically looking at it uh, from that perspective is really really interesting I think she's like you know what I mean the Wendy Buffett of our era effectively that's the way I kind of see it and her circle of competence is future technology technological advancements which for me really really excites me so I know I digressed a little bit apologies but I just wanted to kind of give you an example of when you start looking at her funds you will start to see some replication of certain holdings and for me based off what I've read and what I've researched this is my theory of why she's basically doing that and how she's basically approaching that now let's go to the third ETF this is ARK W so this is the next generation internet ETF and this is all about cloud cyber security blockchain big data AI IOT machine learning all of that good stuff good stuff and you can see some of the stuff here um, you can see the net asset value the share price is $121 you can see the return since inception on an annual basis is 32% and you can see again Tesla's there um, you can see Roku Square Facebook Slack Pinterest, Spotify, lending trees also there and obviously these are all her weightings accordingly um, for some of those stocks. Now if you want to see her full weightings just click on that you can see a link called fund holdings and it tells you all of the stocks and all of the weightings as well. Some people always ask me Curtis how do I find stocks like where do I go to just find a stock? I've said this on multiple occasions but maybe I haven't emphasized it so apologies apologies I'm going to take this L but I feel like one good way to potentially do so is look at ETFs look at ETFs and see what stocks are you know are you know a composite that's within that ETF um, and then you know start looking at some of those stocks individually and I think that is one way that you can actually you know start looking at specific holdings and try to find you know opportunities for yourself you know there's only so many times you could look at CNBC or Financial Times and just hope some stock is going to be talked about in the news and then just try to ride the wave I think if you're going to be an active investor I think looking at funds like this and seeing you know what what's in here mm, unity you know unity is a stock that i'm actually currently looking at at the moment Unity's in there so i might go do some research into unity or i might do some research into octa you obviously know that i've already got octa so i'm up 112 percent on octa and whatnot whatnot nvidia paypal etc etc so i think that's one way that you can potentially start looking at stocks etc we're dropping a lot of gems in this man subscribe to the channel and definitely definitely like the video if you got this far i would very very much appreciate it now the next fund you can see is the genomics revolution fund this is all about enhancing human life through scientific developments and healthcare essentially you know healthcare is definitely not my strong suit i'm not a doctor i'm not a medical guy i'm not a you know a chemist or whatever um yeah i'm not a chemist but what i will say is that I can obviously understand and appreciate what advancements in bio, um, bioinformatics and stem cells and agricultural biology and all of these things is potentially going to do, not just for human life, but for society as a whole. We're in the midst of, you know, one of the biggest pandemics that, you know, I think the world has ever seen since, what was that, bird flu or whatever the one that was in during the Great Depression and so forth. So, you know, Healthcare is obviously going to be of significant importance. It's going to be a significant focus across the board. You've just seen that one of the SPACs that's basically been launched is Clover Health. Um, one of the SPACs, 
special purpose acquisition companies from Chamath, Panipatia, um, IPOC, Clover Health, go check it out. Um, and again, this is all about improving the patient experience and, experience and effectively reducing the amount of times a patient actually needs to see their GP because actually using machine learning, they're actually getting better recommendations of healthcare, um, better healthcare, better support, better guidance, better physicians, um, and they're able to obviously lead healthier, happier lives in the future. So, you know, just from that alone, we've got critical thinking abilities to be able to understand that whether whether you know a sector or not, you can potentially understand the importance of a sector, you know, within the industry. And this is where something like me personally, I might try and look and research into these stocks and might be like, you know what, I, I understand the sector now. I'm going to pick one or two stocks. Or maybe I try to research into 10 of these and actually realize through the course of it that I still don't understand the sector. So maybe I'll just get the ETF instead. And that might be an easier way to basically do that. But yeah, this is that that purpose of that. $74 is the share price. You can see 19% annual since inception. You, in, Invite was in one of the other previous um um, funds CRISPR was also in one of the previous funds as well and then you can see some other companies that are basically there as well and then the last one is the fintech innovation this is all about disrupting financial services with technology you can see some of the the key things here is transaction innovation frictionless funding platforms customer facing platforms this is what i call the enablers and you know the net asset value the share price 43 dollars now i don't know how this is as of the 13th of october um and obviously so yeah i guess they update it um on a on a daily basis and the return to inception is basically 40 percent on an annual basis so obviously that's really strong and you can see square was there again mecca de libra which is there mecca de libra is interesting because that's actually uh a, a e-commerce platform an online marketplace but i think they've got some payment technology which is proprietary um, and so you know that i think is the reason why they're probably quite a significant holding or the second biggest holding here you can see lending tree's been in quite a few of them zillow's been there before as well alibaba has definitely got things like alipay adgen is a payment platform similar to paypal i think adgen for me, you know, I've heard of it, you know, through my through my runners within the industry, but um, I definitely think it's one of the probably like the top five or the top three in terms of its its sector. But um, I do also hear some 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 from from developers specifically some negative stories around that. I'm interested why Pinterest is actually in, in this one this fund specifically. So let's have a look. Transaction innovations. I don't think Pinterest is that. Blockchain technology. I don't think Pinterest. Um, leverages blockchain risk transformation I don't know if it's got nothing to do with risk frictionless funding platforms definitely not customer facing platforms so I guess basically because it's a customer facing platform that's probably the reason why Pinterest is basically in that but you know I don't really associate Pinterest with fintech so just because of that I guess mentally in my head it's like hmm, that's a bit of an iffy one but um but obviously, you know, she got her reasons and so forth. And then, yeah, here you'll see all of the information, like expense ratios and the stuff that we kind of alluded to earlier. Um, and that's basically there with that fund. Now, so definitely check out the performances when you're actually looking at it. Now, as I alluded to earlier, you cannot buy any of these funds in UK brokers. Let me explain to you why. Because these are uh, American US ETFs. Most brokers in the UK don't actually have US ETFs anymore. They used to, and the ones that do, and if you had invested into them, that you can still potentially hold them and sell it, but you can't just buy any new shares. Um, this is due to EU re regulation on PRIPs. So PRIPs is basically packaged retail investments and insurance products. And what that basically means is that to protect investors, what the EU um, wanted is that any financial products such as you know um, investment products and insurance products it has to come with what's called a kid and not a baby but a key illustration document a key information document a key information document so that information document says things like the risk and so forth i'm going to give you an example of a kid so here you can see this is the iShares s p 500 technology sector fund and this is what a key invest sorry key investor document why have i forgotten the name of this it might be key investor document or key illustration document either way it's just called a kid in it it's called a kid and you can see things like the risk profile as an example so it tells you how risky the funds are this is an EU requirement and you know 
a lot of the EU funds and the, the, the funds and the ETFs that's basically domiciled in Ireland, they'd already done that. So they'd already done that and got it, man got it managed and got it patterned and they're obviously taken care of. But the US ETFs pretty much just didn't give a fuck. So they didn't care and they didn't care at all. And that's why the EU basically have said that most UK brokers cannot actually have um, these US ETFs. So they're actually not available on pretty much the majority of, of UK brokers. However, so they're not on free trade, they're not on 212. You won't see these funds on there anyway, on, on free trade or 212. However, there are two ways that you can actually buy it. And I'm going to explain that to you now. The first way is through stake. So remember a week ago, two weeks ago, I did a stake review and I talked to all about the stake platform and why I liked it and why I think it's a good investment platform and didn't get that much views. And some of you guys are like, oh, why are you talking about stake and blah, 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 blah. Well, I bet you're probably thinking differently now because stake is a US broker. Now, some people have said it's an Australian broker. No, it's not. It's an Australian brand that started in Australia, but the actual brand stake is built on a platform called DriveWealth. DriveWealth is a US accredited broker, United States accredited broker. It's basically FINRA regulated, SIPC regulated, insured rather, and it's a US domicile broker. So effectively, what that means is that when you invest via stake, you are actually transferring your money to the US, your money's stored in the US, and then obviously you're investing in securities via US broker. So if you check on stake you can actually find all of these funds now the only issue is because obviously it's FTSE regulated and we're still within the EU the issue is you need to be what's called an accredited investor and accredited investor is defined by an investor that has a 30k portfolio so someone like me i could potentially invest because i have a 30k portfolio although i would have to put a 30k of the portfolio into stake to basically do do so if you've got less than a 30k portfolio you won't be able to do so now for those of you that don't have a 30k portfolio there is hope there is hope. The second way you can do it is through the pies in trading 212. Listen, I've had a look at most of these stocks are pretty much all available on trading 212. And the beauty of that means that with the pie, you pie feature, you can effectively create a pie add all of these stocks within the pie um, not just the top 10 holdings you can actually add most of the holdings that you actually see here not all of them but the vast majority of them you can you can basically add and you can just basically change the weighting accordingly so because you can change the weighting in trading 212 just basically add tesla add invite add square add roku add crispr and just change the weighting accordingly and effectively you've created your own etf which is the whole reason why i have pies because that's the whole reason why i love pies and the best part of it all is you're not paying any expense ratio you're not paying any expense ratio because it's not an actively managed fund now what it does mean though is that when they change their holdings and when they add new things and when they remove new things you've got to obviously track that at least you know you've got to do some work and obviously then you can manage that within your pies and track that and change that effectively so you know that's going to be on you you know i'm not saying that you have to change the weightings every time the weightings change and you know that's completely on you how you manage it but if you want to say look i want to get these holdings at least as a group together then using the trade in two on two pies is a great way to do so so yeah the two ways is buy the fund directly via stake if you've got 30k or more or use trade in 212 and create the holdings yourself via the pies feature and both of those two ways in my opinion are very acceptable ways for you to actually get exposure to these ARK investments because like I say I think Kathy Woods is a phenomenal investor I think she's got a great eye for future technology I think we're seeing you know some of her um, ambitious statements come to fruition partially part of the way um and i think she's got a good eye for stock picking and i think you know for those of you that actually want to see if you can get a fund and you know have your life be a bit simple then you know i definitely think this is a good way to go so yeah hopefully you found this video useful you know me i i definitely you know my my, my video style is not to have a script 
I kind of just like to just talk and just talk to you and just, you know what I mean, just get the points out to you and just, you know, just, just, just keep it all the way 100. So hopefully you liked the video. If you did, please smash that like button. Please subscribe to the channel. If you want to join and talk more stocks and, you know, talk in the forum and get some more support and information on stocks and definitely join the channel. The link is down below. If you are new and you don't have a trade in 212 or stake account i will put my link down below in the description if you've got 30k and you want to buy the funds then you can obviously join stake via that if you actually just want to um, create the pie yourself within trading 212 you can click on the link you get a free share and then obviously you can start creating your pies as well so i will put the links down below and you can effectively do that as well but yeah hopefully you found this video useful definitely share definitely like definitely subscribe get in the comments let me know how you feel about arc how you feel about kathy wood how you feel about some of the stocks we covered off today and i will catch you next time with another investment video take care guys peace damn it i talked for 35 minutes straight no water madness love